We have a brand new iPhone 7, a new Galaxy S7, and an old iPhone 6 here. Now two of these phones are advertised to have good water resistance ratings, and the iPhone 6 does not. So we decided to see just how water resistant these devices are, using the shower test, the bathtub test, and a few other tests. First up, the shower test. All three phones were turned on and put in the shower for one minute. The water droplets here interfere with the screen's touch sensors, which is why these phones are spazzing out a bit. But after drying, the touch functions and all the other functions were normal for all three phones. The iPhone 6 touchscreen wasn't quite 100% though. It sometimes didn't register all of our commands, particularly swiping. Testing was repeated at two minutes and then the phones were flipped over for three more minutes with their cameras on. Next we decided to do the bathtub test. So we created this janky camera setup and filled the tub with water. The phones were placed underwater for almost an hour with occasional testing. While we're waiting on the test, let's talk about the waterproof codes these phones have and what they actually mean. Both of these phones have an IP code or international protection marking. This is an international standard for grading the protection of electronic parts from solid particles and liquids. The first number is solid particles, like dust, and it goes from 0 to 6, with 6 being complete protection from dust entrance. The second number is liquid protection, and it goes from 0 to 9. 7 refers to protection from water immersion up to 1 meter for 30 minutes with no harmful ingress, that is, entrance, of water into the device. This is the rating the iPhone 7 has. To earn a rating of 8, the device needs to withstand more than 1 meter for 30 minutes, and the exact depth depends on what the manufacturer decides. The S7 has an IP68 rating because it was tested to offer liquid protection in 1.5 meters of water. Okay, boringness. Back to the bathtub. Unfortunately, the iPhone 6 drowned. Sad face. But the iPhone 7 and the Galaxy S7 were working just fine. So overall, there's a clear difference here, as the iPhone 6 tapped out after only a two minute bath. After confirming water resistance in the shower and bathtub, we came up with another bad idea. Well, actually three of them. First, can the iPhone be used as an underwater video camera? For this, we did the sync test. Surprisingly, the microphone works well underwater, although when we took them out, the sounds were a little bit distorted, particularly on the iPhone, but this was temporary. Don't try this at home, kids, else your parents will not buy you an iPhone 8. We also tested the phone in the laundry after wrapping it securely in a towel. It did bang around a bit, but we did a quick wash on the delicate setting. Both phones came out spelling nice and worked fine. But our concern here is, should you forget your phone in your pants, the rolling and bouncing might break it. Dishwashers are absolutely fascinating. My whole life I've wondered what goes on inside them. In summary, these tests confirm the water resistant features, which of course means you do not need to verify them on your own device, because you don't want it to look like our iPhone 6. We decided to take this one apart just to see how much water was inside, and it turns out water was everywhere. This is somewhat surprising, but it could be because the phone had its screen replaced last year. We put it in a bucket of dry rice, and we'll see if it can be revived in a few days. This does highlight one very important point. It takes a lot of water to damage a phone right away. But, small amounts of water could have leaked into these phones. Even though it doesn't show it now, it could be a problem in a few months. So if you want to keep your phone longer than that, keep it dry. We also have a few more tests planned for these phones. If there's one you'd like to see, share it below.